welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial to show you how I can paint pine trees in various ways in order to put snow on them. Quite often you see me painting them with gouache and I usually will just use a titanium white or permanent white artist gouache. This one is by M. Graham. You can get them by Windsor & Newton and there are other ones out there but M. Graham and Windsor and & Newton are the two best whites that I have found that are the most opaque and have the best body to them. Now, question I was posed the other day was by a person who was saying that she had did not have any white gouache and she wanted to know if she could just use white watercolor to get the same effect. And the answer to that is no, you're not going to get the same effect. The reason is, is because most white watercolor is zinc based, not titanium based. So it is a zinc white and gouache is more of a titanium white, although you can get gouache in a zinc white as well, which would be semi-opaque. The white that comes in a watercolor palette uh, is meant more for blending colors and getting a different type of a color, uh, you know, maybe toning something down uh, to a different value, brightening it, or uh, making a pastel color, or also to add body to the paint that you have um, to make it a little more opaque, maybe to layer it on top of something. So that's what it's meant for. It's not meant for flicking snow on a paper or to just paint white over a dark color and expect it to become white. You would have to either use gouache or you could use white acrylic paint or you could use uh, like a white um, a white paint pen of some sort. These are Sharpie. I, I don't even know if they have anything in them anymore. Or you can use, uh, let's see, I've got these two types of white paint pen that I use more for journaling than anything else. Or you can use gel pens. I'm sorry, this one looks horrible because my dog got to it. He's never chewed anything of mine, but he chewed this pen for some reason. This one is more of a fine point pen, and this one is a medium point. So they're a little bit different in size, but um, they're both by Signal, and that's my favorite brand. Uh, Uniball makes them, Uniball Signal. This is the 153, and then this is their fine point one. So you could do this as well. Now, what if you didn't have any of these things? Well, you can paint your snow by painting your pine trees uh, effectively with the snow already on them. But you have to remember to leave the white of the paper. I was showing in another video, I showed this accordion book that I had made. And um, one of them has a, this I sprinkled with gouache. This was sprinkled with gouache. This one I used masking fluid and put the white on, but it was too big. Uh, and I went over that with gouache too. But you can see here that I painted pine trees that look like they have snow on them already. And that was just by using the white of the paper. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And I will show you how I do that. Let me grab some green. You can use any green you want. Sometimes I will use my greens and build them up. So I'm going to start with a sap green here. And I'm just going to go ahead in and start with the top of my tree. And I will just paint this on like this. And then what you want to do is effectively paint the branches underneath. And that's all you're going to do. So, this is how I would paint a pine tree. Now I'd go back again with the darker layer. And maybe just hit the bottoms of these a little bit more in certain spots. And that 
would be my pine tree. Now you could add a trunk. So I'll just grab a little bit of brown here and put a trunk on here. You can have it showing through in different spots. Don't bring it all the way down though, because if you do that, then this no longer looks like snow. It looks like a hole in the tree. And you don't want that to look like a hole in the tree. Uh, I could have added another layer in here even. And just put a few things in between here. And that's how I would paint a pine tree with my um, snow already on it. Then you can go ahead and paint in the color around it. Now here I did not do that. So you can see there's a little bit of blue showing through. This was just a quick sketch that I did. It was not any big thing. So um, there's a little blue in some spots. But uh, there were some white left on the mountain. So it actually looks like the white is left on the trees, and it worked out perfectly. I got really lucky that way. But let's say you want to go ahead in with uh, like a night sky. I'm going to grab some indigo blue here. Maybe mix in a little indanthrone to make it a little bluer. And then I'm going to paint my night sky in. And this is still wet, so I may have a bit of a problem with it, but... And you don't need any white at all. Now, if it's snowing, you may want to add uh, a bit of salt. Yeah. Okay, have a great Thanksgiving. I'm sorry, my cleaning lady was just leaving, so she was yelling to me that she was done. Um, but what you want to do is have some table salt ready. And while this is wet, just sprinkle a little bit of table salt down. And just pinch it in your fingers and just sprinkle it. Now, I don't think I have this wet enough. Let me wet it a little bit more. i got to get it wetter uh, so that so that the snow works. And then I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle my salt down. Now, you can't rush this along. you got to let it do it on its own. My salt has immediately turned blue, which is good. What it does is it absorbs the fluid away from the paper and you end up effectively pulling the color right up off the paper before it dries. And then you'll get a snow effect. Now I've never done this with this dark of blue before, so we'll see how it turns out. So that is one way that you can do snow. And if you don't have if you don't have anything else at home, then go ahead and do it this way. In fact, using the white of the paper is really a nice thing to do. Then you can take your colors, if you want to use a little bit of a purplish color, blue, whatever, and you can paint some shadows of your snow here and there. You can even put a little bit of it over on your pine tree here and there so that it's not all stark white. And then if there's um, moonlight, let's say there's moonlight shining on this tree, then I can paint my shadow. Onto the snow. And then you're all set. And that, So that's effectively one way that you can do this. Another way to do it is to just go ahead and, uh, let's see, I'll start with the trunk and put that in here and maybe a little bit up here, a little bit here, and we'll leave that like that. Then I'm going to go ahead with some greens. And again, you can, if you want to start with your sap, that's fine. So I'll go in with my sap green at the top here with my nice young branches. And I'm using a number five Winsor & Newton pointed round, which is a very fine tipped 
brown. It's great for detail work. I really like it because it holds a lot of paint. It's a sable brush. It is not synthetic. So if you don't like um, natural hair brushes, this is not a brush you'd like to buy. I want to get a larger one, but they have not made one in months. And I love, I just love this um, curve on their handles. It's so ergonomically designed. It just feels, it fits in the hand so well. You wouldn't think that would make such a big difference, but it is so comfortable. I'm addicted to it. At first, I wasn't sure I'd like it, but now that I'm using it for fine detail work, or now that it's becoming winter and I'm using it for pine trees, um, it's just great. I love it. So I'll, I'll usually start out, it really depends, but if I want more focus on my trees, I will start out with my lighter colors, and then I will go ahead in with a darker color in the under branches to make the tree look more full and realistic, like it has shadow on the branches, because not all the branches are going to be the same color. This is effectively how you get more of a three-dimensional look into your branches. Now, there's still a lot of white left here, and I could use that as snow if I wanted to because there's white in between. But I'm going to go ahead in now with a mix of my green. Actually, I'm going to grab some jadeite. We'll do jadeite first. I have a little blue on my brush, though, so it might be a little bit darker. And I'm just going to go in to these areas that would be underneath and I'm adding some detail to those. Very simple. You're just taking time. You can't rush. You can't rush it. That's that's just it. If I start rushing, then everything falls apart. <laughs> so I just have to take it easy. And then in the under branches down here. And then I'm going to go a little bit darker by adding some Indanthron or you can add some indigo. In fact, I'll add some indigo here, just in spots, not on all the branches, especially more at the bottom. There. Now I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint one more real quick. And if you do like the video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Just gently tap it and it will help me out a lot. Many of you watch, I'll get a lot of views and then I'll only get a few liking the video. And I know I'm guilty of going at past a video and then just not hitting the like button afterward. Try to do it even before I watch the video just to help the person out sometimes. But I'm going to dry this real quick. This tree trunk is a little too wet. So continuing with my sap green. So yes, if you could hit that like button, I'd appreciate it. The views really help me out. Subscriptions help me out too because then what you'll get notified of videos if you've used the notification bell next to the subscription. So um, that also helps me but the likes actually move me up in the search engines. So if somebody's searching for something then they'll find my video faster. There's also different ways that you can paint the pine trees themselves. Now, right now I'm using all downward turned branches except for the initial growth at the top of the tree. But you can also do trees where you have upward branches and I'll just take this and go ahead in with this. I have a lot of sap on here. And then you can just paint all of your branches in an upward motion. Just look at different photos of pine trees. You'll see that they, some are up, upward facing, some are downward facing. I mean, even if you look at your Christmas trees, if any of you still buy real trees, 
you'll see that some of your trees look like the branches are going down and others they're going up. There, this is just being done very quickly so that you can see the difference in this. And still, that can have, that could be white snow, and then I could go in with the sky around it. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some darker color under here. Indigo and Indanthrone blue are great for these kinds of things. It fools the eye. You look at it, it doesn't even look blue. After a while, it looks green. It just kind of blends in with the other color. The other two, you can go ahead in with either white gouache, white pen, uh, white acrylic pen, white acrylic paint. I don't have any white acrylic paint right now. I gotta get a cheap tube of white acrylic paint. It would be nice to have on hand. I have a big bucket of it, but it's drying up. So it's got that rubbery glob <laughs> in it. I don't use my acrylic paint much anymore. And I had this big jug of white paint because you go through a lot of it if you're an acrylic painter. I'm not so much anymore. I'm gonna go ahead in again. I'm gonna grab some Indanthrone blue and I'm gonna go around all these other trees. and just give myself a dark sky. It doesn't have to be dark. You can do a gray sky. I should have picked some gray for some of this, but I'm just using this example today. And I'm gonna cover up that white area because this is not our snow, although that could be your snow. If it is, you just wanna carefully go around your tree in certain areas so that it doesn't look like a triangle when you're done. But I'm going to cover these up. There. And then I'm going to go in and put a little shadowing underneath. You can use Moon Glow. That's another terrific color to use. I don't know where it is in my palette. I left my other palette up north. So my Moon Glow is next to my Danthrone. If you have Moon Glow by Daniel Smith, it's a great color to use. I love it for shadowing. It's just terrific. there. Now I would go ahead and do my first layer right away with my gouache. I'm going to grab a little gouache here and show you how I would do it with gouache. Now getting a brush, a good brush is key. I was using these uh, fake um, hog bristle brushes. They're like scrubbers I buy. This is Master's Touch 16 for big... I use it for scrubbing out areas, although I use a magic eraser a lot more for that now. But you can go ahead and use a... This is what I found to be great. I don't know if these are blending pencils or eraser. They're eraser pencils of some sort. And I don't like these. So they're not great for watercolor paper anyway. And there's a brush on the back that's there for brushing away your your um, eraser marks, I guess. So what I do is I take my gouache, I have just a little bit down here, but I just take my gouache and I get my brush wet. And this brush is great because it flicks big, bigger chunks. I actually have to be careful with it because it flicks like too much. But I'll start by flicking while it's wet so that it soaks in and then I go back and I do it again. Now see, it's kind of making a, almost like salt would make, that kind of feathered out look, which is really pretty. And that's because the paint underneath is still wet. So my first layer, that's what I do. I put that in there like that, and then I just let it go. Then when it's dry, I go back again. And I will also, brush on the trees some paint like this. And if I want it heavy on the branches, 
I will take my gouache and you want to keep it thick. If it's too watered down when you when it's dry, it will kind of be semi-transparent. In fact, this might be a little too watery, but I'm just going to go ahead and just paint it on the outer areas of the branches. Don't want it on the under area. It has to look natural. So I would put it on the outer areas, the parts that would be sticking out away from the tree that would catch the snow. And that's basically how I would do that. Then, I mean, if you want, you can singly add in snowflakes by just popping them in with a brush like this. But once this is dry, I would go ahead, I'm just going to go ahead and dry it real quick. And the paper I'm using today is B paper, B-E-E. -E. This is a six by nine sheet. You can actually buy packages of it, I think at Michael's, places like that, or you can buy them on Amazon or whatever. Oops, I didn't want, oh yeah, I do. I want to go back onto this one and I want to add more snow. Now that this is dry, it won't feather. But see how it makes great snow. It's nice and heavy, yet you can still get fairly good control over it. It just looks so perfect, I think. So this brush is like my favorite to use. I have a couple of them. I have um, this one is by Stadler. It's a Mars razor. And uh, I haven't used this one, but again, it's got those plastic, thick plastic bristles. So if you use something like that, a toothbrush can work, but sometimes it's too fine and you end up with such fine snowflakes that they don't even show. Now see, these are fading away because there was probably too much water on my brush. If I add a little more gouache, you don't have that problem with acrylic paint because acrylic paint is fully opaque. It's plastic. But if I go in with full strength gouache, then I get a better effect. So that's that one. So if you have gouache, that's a very easy way to do it. If you've forgotten to use the white of your paper or whatever. Now on this one, I would go back and I would fix this up a little bit, this indigo here. I'd have it coming in and out a little more so that it's not so stark on these branches because there's too much snow coming out here. So just getting rid of the triangle effect of the tree is key to making it look more natural. So that's what I would do there. Now this feels like it's dry. I think it's dry. So let's see if our snow worked on this. You just kind of scrape it off. Now oh, my salt turned blue. There. And that's your snow effect on this. The wetter that you have your paper before you put the salt down, the more effect, you're, the greater the effect will be on that. But it had already been sinking in, and since it's a staining color sinking into the paper, um, I got some effect. You can still see that that's, that's snow. It's pretty. So here is just using table salt and the white of the paper. Here I've used gouache and a little bit of the white of the paper, but then the rest is gouache. Now over here... Let's try a paint pen. See how this works. This is an acrylic paint pen. I really like this skinny one. Let's get this moving though. Hopefully it's not empty. Nope, it's not empty. And now here I might end up with bigger dots, but what I'd do first is I'd go in. I think it's getting empty. There we go. dabbing it on my palette so that I can prime it. It needs primed frequently. I don't know why it's not just coming down on its own. I'm probably using it wrong. There we go. 
So there, I got snow on my tree. Now I want to just put snow in the sky. You don't have to have it snowing out, but if you do want it to snow out, then just take your pen. I'm using just a corner of it. This is kind of a flat tip, and I'm just using the corner of the tip to give myself small snowflakes all over. Now as these dry, they're not going to fade. They should stay the right um white, the bright white that you had when you when you lay it down. You can even use this for stars in the sky. Now this would be, you know, you're mixing your media up here a little bit. People say, is it all right to go ahead and use the white? Because you'll hear from certain people that white is bad. Don't, if you're a watercolorist, you should never have white in your palette, blah, blah, blah. Well, most of these people, the reason they're saying that, and I was taught that way myself, is because if you're going to do any juried shows, if you're ever going to show your work competitively, this would be considered mixed media at this point. It would no longer be considered a watercolor piece because you've used acrylic paint with it. The same with gouache. Gouache is considered a different medium, even though... It is a watercolor in a way. It is an opaque watercolor. It's not really considered watercolor. It's called gouache because it's gouache. Same with casein. Um, you'll see uh, James Gurney uses that a lot. And basically casein is like gouache, only that it um, never lifts once it's dry. With gouache, it will lift off the paper once it's re-wet. It reconstitutes. And it can make it a little more difficult to work with. There's tricks to that, too. And I'll go into that in a gouache video. But um, if you were ever going to use a winter scene or any scene that you, you forgot your white and you needed to add white in, you're better off using a magic eraser and scrubbing off the color without ruining the paper before using any white because you would be disqualified. So that's why white is a no-no. So here, this one has acrylic. And now here, I'm just going to go ahead and try to use gel pen. I'm going to go ahead in with my Signo, Uniball Signo 153. Hopefully this pen is working. And now I'm going to go ahead and try to color in some ink. A lot of times, though, these pens do not want to write over watercolor. It's strange. Yes, yeah, see, it's already given me trouble. I need to get a piece of paper here that I can keep. Here's a book. I just have a little book here that I can keep by me, and I can use it to reprime my pen. It's a little harder to do. I've never done this before, but it can be done. There, now it's priming. The other thing is, is once you've put it down, you can't go over it again. It'll only accept one layer. The ink won't allow you to put any more down. I'm not sure why that is, but it just... It's a gel ink, so it's like jelly on top of the paper, I guess. There we go. Now it's really coming out good. And you can get more fine look with this, which is kind of pretty, actually. I've never done this before. Learn something new every day. And then what would I do for snowflakes? I would tap them on like this. And that would be the other way. So here I've shown you four different ways to put snow on a pine tree. Please hit the like button down below and subscribe and you and hit the notification bell so that you're notified of all my upcoming videos. And I've got a lot coming up this week. I've had my doodle and sketch. I'm gonna be doing a doodle and sketch painting. And I've done this and then I've got a snow globe that I'm gonna be doing and all sorts of stuff. So uh, stay tuned and 
If you don't hear from me again, you should, but have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Be grateful. Remember to be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.